there are dominator hierarchies and there are growth hierarchies or actualization hierarchies. Dominator hierarchies are all the horrible things that postmodernists say they are. They're tyrannical, they're power structured, they're uh, oppressive, they're the cause of almost every nightmare you can think of in human history. And you want to do as much as you can to get rid of those as much as you possibly can. But then there are growth hierarchies. Those are the opposite of, dom literally the opposite of dominator hierarchies. In a dominate, are those the same thing as what Peterson would describe as hierarchies of competence? Close to it. The dominator hierarchies, the higher you go in a dominator hierarchy, the more people you can oppress, the more people you can hurt, the more exclusive you are. The higher you go in a growth hierarchy, the more inclusive you are. You actually are including more people. We saw that simple developmental model that goes from just me to a group, to all groups, to all humans, to integrating all of those. That's a growth hierarchy. And the, what's so ironic and horrifying is that the postmodernists in their extreme view collapse these. And so they don't see that the values that they represent to the extent they represent values, so egalitarian values, for example, or um, values of identity or diversity. You're not born with those values. And of those sort of six to eight stages of development, there's only one stage that has those values, and that's green. But green is the result of about five stages of growth hierarchical development. And when you pull the rug out from under all hierarchies, you pull the rug out, you pull the ladder out from getting to your own values. It's suicidal. It's absolutely self-destructive. And so in a sense, they've almost given up on that. And that's why they end up getting just very absolutistic and just sort of yelling slogans and regressing to ethnocentric and all of that kind of stuff. So. These hierarchies um, are clearly important. And by the way, just that whole notion of a growth hierarchy, Peterson rather famously traced it back to lobsters. And he was simply trying to demonstrate that, the, that some of these hierarchies are absolutely necessary. We can't get around them. And they're certainly not the product of Western capitalistic, tyrannical patriarchy, they back like whatever it's 350 million years or something like that to, to the lobsters. But in fact, those kinds of growth hierarchies, um, which are also, Arthur Kessler coined the term holarchy, because each of its stages is a holon. And a holon is a whole that's part of a larger whole. And almost everything in the, in the universe is a holon. And so even if you go back and just look at the overall evolutionary sequence, going all the way back to the Big Bang, you go from atoms to molecules to cells to organisms to then even more complex, differentiated, and evolved organisms. Each one of those is getting more inclusive. And they transcend and include. Literally, molecules go beyond atoms, but they enfold them. They actually include them. Molecules don't hate atoms. They don't oppress atoms. They don't exclude atoms. If anything, they love them. I mean, they're actually hugging them. That's what growth hierarchies do. And if you're really serious about values of inclusion and diversity and comprehensiveness, you need a growth holarchy. You need a growth hierarchy. And by the way, the only people that use dominator hierarchies are people at low stages on growth hierarchies. And everybody on a higher stage of growth hierarchy criticizes dominator hierarchies. That's how you get to do it. And that's why the postmodernists were criticizing it, is because they were at this relatively high stage of development, even as they started to go extreme and sort of mess it up.